Hello and welcome to a tutorial for the One Ring Second Edition by Free League Games for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. I'm going to show how, as a player, to get into the game, how to access your character sheet, and how to make dice rolls. So to begin, you will uh, follow the link and you'll come to a screen like this. Pick who you want to play. Uh, we'll go ahead and play Malvagil of the North. He's a ranger. Um, in many games, there's no password. Your dungeon master, game master, will tell you if there's a password. In this one, there's not. So we join the game session, and we'll get to the main foundry screen. Now, there is an information bar that pops up here. You can... Uh, um, the name will be set by the game master, but you can change a few things on here. You can change the color. You'll have a little dot. You can see down here in the corner, um, there's a, a little dot there that kind of shows... Uh, what your uh, um, your color is for targeting and various things like that. Uh, if you want to put in a, a player pronoun, you can also put in um, kind of who you are playing in here. Um, you can X out of this if you want to, or just hit Save Player Configuration. To find your character, you will go up here to the toolbar on the, the right side of the screen. There's a little icon that has... Uh, um, a head and shoulders. It's the actors tab. Sometimes there's a folder you click in and you should see your character sheet. Click on your character and it will pull the sheet up. To use this, uh, there are a few ways that you can roll dice on here. So if your game master calls for a skill roll, that's going to be the, the main thing you'll use here. Uh, it's either going to be one of your strength skills one of your heart skills, or one of your wit skills. You may also do a shadow test using valor or wisdom, um, but it will be the, exactly the same for all of these things. Let's say that Malvagil is making an awareness roll. So looking at the sheet, because this circle here is filled in, that tells me that it is a favored skill. So I will roll two of the feet die, which is a 12-sided die, and I'll take the better of the two rolls. If I was doing athletics, I am not favored in athletics, so I would only roll one feet die. Over here are my success die, my skill level. Um, in awareness, I have two diamonds checked, so I would also roll two six-sided die. If I was doing uh, athletics, I would, again, because I'm not favored, roll one 12-sided die, but I would also roll two six-sided die. For awe, even, uh, it would be one feet die and one six-sided die. If I have no skill levels in there, like song, I would roll a 12-sided die, and that's it. Now, my target is my, my attribute score. So in this case, it's 11. So if I'm rolling on a 12-sided die, I need an 11 or 12. Well, this is a special die. It has numbers 1 through 10, and then it has two special symbols. One is the Eye of Sauron, which counts as 0, uh, that would actually be the, the number 11 if you had a standard D12. The other is the 12, which looks like a Gandalf rune. Uh, that is an automatic success. So even if I'm doing uh, something like over here, my, my heart score is 13. If I make a courtesy roll, the only way I can pass that, uh, if I don't do any modifications, is with a Gandalf rune. Now when I go to, to roll the die, let's do an awareness roll. I just click on the name of the skill and it will pull up this roll box where I can add modifiers and your game master will tell you what modifiers you have. It automatically factored in that it's favored. Um, if um, I have any penalty or bonus die, it's down here at the bottom. If he says add one bonus die, I'll click on that. If he says add a penalty die, I will click here. You can see it Xing out the six. Let's go ahead and roll just a straight roll. We hit the roll button and it will roll the dice. I can see the dice on the screen if you have dice so nice added on there. We can also go to the chat bar and it will show it was an awareness roll. My difficulty was 11 and I rolled a 17. If I click on the dice, I can see the results. I got an eight and a five, so it took the eight and then I added a five and a four, so nine. Eight plus nine is 17. That was above my target. That is a success. Let's roll that again. Only this time, let's say I spend a point of hope. Now, Malvagil has a certain uh, amount of, of hope that he can spend. If I click on the, um, the hope point bonus die, it will automatically deduct a hope point from me. It also activates this uh, icon here that says inspired. Now, to be inspired, 
I want to use one of my distinctive features. I have Honorable, Tall, and Shadow Lore. This is completely up to you. And you would say, you know, as I use this skill, um, can I use my honorable feature? Uh, let's say it's a, um, let's say it's an awe roll. I'm trying to impress someone, and so I use my honorable feature. I'm not trying to impress them through deception, but I'm trying to impress them through my my humility as well as my strength, my deeds. Maybe that falls under honorable. And you could ask the game master, may I be inspired by calling upon that distinctive feature? If they say yes, you would click on to spend a point of hope and then click on inspired. And now that will give me two bonus dies. So now when I roll this, I'm going to roll the feet die for awe. I will get one die because I have one level in the skill. I will get one die for hope and one die for being inspired. I click roll and it rolls it for me. And so that is a success. I got eight on the feet die and then five on the other die. And then it automatically deducted a point of hope. If I scroll down, here is my, my hope. It's now 10 and the max is 11. Let's go ahead and put that point of hope back on there. If I roll a dice and I'm just going to uh, pick one that I'm, I'm good at, I'm gonna add a bunch of dice. I wanna show you some of the, the special dice on here. So I'm just gonna add six a bonus die on this. It's going to roll a lot of dice and naturally we didn't roll any of the special die. So let's uh, let's try that again. Uh, let's do another healing. Let's add six. I want to show you when you get an Eye of Sauron, a Gandalf rune, or a six. So here's a six right here. This is a, a special success. And, or uh, excuse me, a, a great success. And so that's going to give me a bonus to my to my result. Let's do one more. See if I can show you a Gandalf rune or an Eye of Sauron. There's an Eye of Sauron right there. So that counts as a one, or excuse me, as a zero. So that's a zero uh, for the, uh, the Eye of Sauron, but because this was a favored roll, it'll take the three. So I got three plus six is nine plus one is 10. So it's a failure but I did get a, uh, a six on there. If this came up as a Gandalf rune, that would have been an automatic success regardless of everything else that was rolled. Let's look at uh, also on the, the character sheet, there's a few other uh, things we can look at. These are your uh, resources that will change, your endurance and your hope. So hope we kind of covered. You spend that when you make rolls to add bonus die. If your hope score, if your current hope score ever is equal to or lower than your shadow score, then you become miserable. And when you're miserable, um, you can you can toggle that. You hold down Alt and then click on it, and it will make you miserable. And so now when I roll, if I roll an Eye of Sauron, see now it says miserable. If I roll an Eye of Sauron, um, see if I can roll one here, and of course I can't, but that would be an automatic failure. So let's go ahead and, and take miserable off of here. My endurance is basically my hit points. And as that goes down, if it is ever equal to or less than my load, then I become weary. And I would alt click weary. And then when I make a roll, let's add some bonus die. If I get a one, two, or three on my six sided die, they will count as a zero as well. So you see how the, the two and the three, they're not filled in, they're, they're hollow. That, lets the that lets me know that I am weary and that two three and two will count as zero for the uh, for that that test I still got a success even though I was weary uh, that means I, I rolled well so let's get rid of weary here there are ways you can reduce your load the easiest way is to if you have a helm drop a helm or otherwise you, you need to get rid of gear gear is what weighs you down if we look at the gear here, um, I've got a spear, a leather shirt, and a helm. I could drop the helm, and that would lower my load by four, and then I would no longer be weary until my endurance dropped again. Now, I've got spear on here twice. I've got one-handed and two-handed. Notice that the difference, uh, and I, I put a load of zero for one-handed, because I really only have one spear. 
but I'm, I'm tricking the game into thinking I have two because when I use this two-handed, my injury rating changes and uh, additional damage will change as well uh, if I do any uh, additional successful damage. To do an attack roll, you can't just click on the weapon. It will pull up this arrow that says you need to select one and only one token to attack. You have to target a token in Foundry in order to make use of the combat system. So we're going to go over that here in just a moment. The last thing I want to show you is equipment or gear. This is your traveling gear. Everyone should have at least one. Some will have many. I have a small box of salt and then it will say what skill it's good for. And if I use my small box of salt during, uh, while I'm hunting, um, how I would use it, I don't know. Maybe set it out as a lure and a cow might come by and try to lick it. And then I might shoot the cow with my bow. I don't know. But regardless, I could come up with a way to use that uh, to ensure a more successful hunt. And I would get a bonus six-sided die on that. Um, let's go ahead and jump to combat. In order to do that, I'm going to actually sign out as a player and uh, I'm going to get the combat set up and I will be back to show you how combat works.